So this time we're going to look at what happens if you don't get rid of the missing data and still try and work in a statistical way in Excel. So here is the data I was using in the previous video and I haven't removed the missing data and it's still represented by a double dot there. If you try and plot a scatter graph of these two columns now, something rather interesting happens. I click on insert, go to scatter, uh, like this one, and uh, I get something extremely confusing. I'm just going to leave that in a bit of space on its own. It isn't really helping much. It doesn't look like any scatter graph I was expecting. The title in particular looks very odd. Even if I just delete the title, I've only got two points. I'm not quite sure where these two points are coming from. It's not doing what I expected. Now, if a chart in Excel doesn't do what you expected, you can quite often click on the Select Data option. I have to confess that I think this is a spectacularly unhelpful and confusing way of trying to tell Excel what data to use, and I'm not even sure how to tell it what I want. I could try switching rows and columns. That doesn't look helpful either. Uh, that's still not a nice scatter graph. Um, to be honest, at this point, I want to give up. Something Excel is doing is something I, d I don't understand, and I wanted to do something different. I'm not even sure how to tell it to do that. Um, just by comparison, it still does cope with the correlation. If I try and do the correlation like I did before on the clean data, go for that column, comma, that column. It is coping with the missing data. It's still giving me the 0.3223, which if I flick back to what I did in the previous video, is the same value. The scatter graph is very different. Um, so what's happening is when it encounters this text, which is just two dots as far as Excel is concerned, that's a bit of text, it doesn't really know how to interpret these two data fields. It thinks some of them have got text in, which is why that title went crazy. And it's just a bad idea. Excel can't really cope with having text in there. Um, let's see what happens, though, in these two columns. And the only difference here is that I haven't got deleted the rows with missing data, but I have changed the double dot into an empty cell. And I did that with a uh, find and replace option. I actually searched for double dot and replaced it with nothing. And I just did it all the way down these two columns. So instead of a double dot, every time there's a, a missing bit of data like there or there, it the double dot has become a blank or an empty cell. And now if I try and plot a scatter graph of these two columns, you can see what happens is something a little bit more predictable. And this is actually very like the graph we had before. Again, I don't really want the title. And if I can quickly compare that to that graph, it's looking pretty similar. In fact, I think it's identical. And if I do the correlation, for example, I can just grab that formula. And it's looking to the two columns to the left of it, I and J up there. It's doing the same calculation, and it's coping with the blanks as well. It's not using the numbers which aren't there. It's only using the numbers which have both bits of data. But it works better to have empty cells than it does to have some text in there for the missing data. And it still copes then with this scatter diagram, unlike this one. Just another thing to point out, once you're on a scatter diagram, as I pointed out before, if you're on the chart tools, you can find this select data option, which I confess I still think is unhelpful. But at the bottom left here, the hidden and empty cells option is relevant for us here. It's actually got a setting for what to do with empty cells which are the ones I've got here, and it's showing them as gaps. It's not using them in the graph. Um, what I could tell it to do is plot those empty cells as a zero, so basically change the empties for zeros, and that will change what the graph looks like. Um, not in a good way, in my opinion. If I click OK, you can see a whole row of stuff has turned up at the bottom. This is all the data where I've got something in the first column and nothing, which is now interpreting as zero, uh, and we've got a few things where there's something in the... Uh, there's a zero in the first column and nothing in the other one. And so these data points aren't helpful as emphasizing nicely why you don't want to include them in a scatter diagram because there's just not enough information to use them. So I'm going to turn that back off again, click on chart design, select data, hidden and empty cells, change it back to gaps. And now we are back to a scatter diagram, which is better. To be honest, though, clean the data first. Otherwise, you're going to run into all sorts of trouble with Excel trying to figure out what the heck you mean. One other thing to mention is that there's another sort of uh, thing that Excel might try to do with an empty cell or a cell that has contained an error. Um, for example, if you try and do 1 divided by 0, not that you ever would, uh, it would give an error like this. And another error you might see is something like a hashtag not available. Um, and you can see in both cases, if I put any number in a calculation which is not available or divide by 0, the formula which is trying to use those numbers goes wrong. And this is now spitting out that that number is not available because it doesn't know how to operate with that. It was fine with an empty cell. Actually, it was fine with a bit of text in there as well. It recognized to ignore that. But when it hits an error like that or divide by 0, this thing stops working. So you need to recognize if you get a formula which is not working, you might have encountered uh, an error along the way somewhere. Interestingly, the, uh, the graph is coping fine. And if I put um, something in there which was actually used in the graph, it doesn't screw the graph up. We still get these error messages and things. Uh, value not available is what this NA thing is. But actually, if I get rid of them, if I undo that and undo that as well, then the correlation thing comes back. Uh, just so you know what to expect from Excel when you hit other sorts of error messages.
we'll look at how GeoGebra works with this in another video.